Today, the world pays tribute and celebrates the life of Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gianna. Our prayers go out to their entire family. I grew up a Heat fan, but I'm also a Kobe fan. When I moved out to LA 13 years ago, I was able to follow and witness Kobe's last two championships, an amazing run. He's inspired many people with his work ethic, his attitude, and his love for life and family. So this After Effects tutorial is dedicated to him and is creating the stop motion effect. It's simple, but quite effective. I hope you enjoy it, amigos, and always have that Mamba mentality. The first step is to go online and download images that you can make it work into a sequence, and that's exactly what I did. Bring them into Photoshop and you have to cut them out. I'm going to go ahead and skip this step. I'm hoping that most of you know how to cut them out. And if you don't, there are a lot of tutorials on YouTube already on how to cut out images in Photoshop. Hopefully in the future, I'll do a very comprehensive one with different methods. But what I like to do, for example, for this one is you can see that I have a layer mask. Let me disable it. And this is the image and this is my mask. I label it Kobe Dunk C and I save it as a Photoshop file so I can open it in After Effects. So let's jump into After Effects. Let's go ahead and let's import those Photoshop files. Hit Control I to import. Let's go to the first one, Kobe Dunk 01, and let's hit import. And go to footage, choose layer. Let's choose Kobe Dunk A. Let's ignore the layer styles. It doesn't matter because we don't have any layer styles. And let's choose document size. Hit OK. I'll double click to open in the footage window. And the reason that I like using Photoshop files inside of After Effects, because as you can see, it retains the transparency. Another reason, it retains the layer name. And if you have several layers, it also retains the layer structure. Let's go ahead and let's import the rest of these Photoshop files. Let's go to Kobe Dunk 02. Let's go to the third one. And let's go to the last one. Let's create a new composition. Click on the comp icon and let's call this Kobe Stop Motion. Let's make it 1920 by 1080. I'll make it 23.976 frames per second, but always choose a frame rate that works best for you. And for now, I'll give it a duration of five seconds long. And for the background color, I'm making it this blue gray. And remember that is only there to help us when we have transparency. It won't render this color. Hit OK. Let's go to Kobe Dunk A and let's bring it into our composition. Let's rename this layer. Hit Enter. Let's call it Kobe A. And let's move him all the way to the left side. Bring in the second one and let's put it on top. Let's rename this to Kobe B. Let's move this layer over. Let's bring in the third one. Let's put it on top. Rename this to Kobe C, let's move it over and let's bring in the last one, Kobe D, and let's rename it to Kobe D and let's put him up in the right corner. Okay, as you can see, these images are from different dunks, from different games and different years of Kobe's career, but we can still make it work. Number one is we need to scale the images so they all match. And number two is we need to match the luminance. And I think this is the only one that we need to match the levels. Select all of the layers, hit S for scale, and let's go to Kobe A, and let's scale it up to 120. Let's go to Kobe B, let's make it 130. Kobe C, let's make it 110. and Kobe D, we can make it 110 as well. Let's go to Kobe C and let's add a levels. Go to color correction, go to levels, and let's adjust this slider and let's match it. This is looking better. Okay, let's go ahead and let's start creating copies and these copies will be to create the stop motion. Go to Kobe A and let's make three copies. Control D, Control D, Control D. And let's go to A2 and let's move it over. Go to A3 and let's move it over. And A4 and let's move it over. Let's do the same thing. Let's repeat it, but for Kobe B. 
And before we do that, let's color code these to purple. And let's make this yellow. Okay, let's make three copies. Control D, Control D, Control D. Let's go to B2. Let's move it over. B3. Let's move it over. And let's go to B4. And let's move it over. Let's go to Kobe C. And let's change the color to blue. And let's make three copies. Control D, Control D, Control D. Let's go to C2. Let's go to C3. And let's go to C4. Okay, let's go ahead and select all of our copies. Holding on to control, we can select the copies. Hit T for opacity. And let's drop down the opacity to 35%. Let's go back and this is what we have so far. Let's go ahead and create the stop motion and the stop motion will be by simply offsetting these layers by two frames. We're working at 23.976, which is pretty much almost 24 frames. So if you're working at 23.976, 24 frames or 25 frames, offsetting every two frames works well. You can try every one frame, but that will be super fast. If you're working at 30 frames, I recommend to try out three frames, offset every three frames. You can also try two frames like we're doing right now. What we need to do is we need to trim the out point for all of our layers. Hit Control A and let's drag the edges and the current time indicator. Actually, let's move it to frame two and you can drag the edges or use a keyboard shortcut, Alt right bracket. And let me zoom in and let me drag it to exactly frame two. Now this is important. Let's deselect, let's click outside, select Kobe A, holding on to shift, select Kobe D. Let's right click, go to keyframe assistant and go to sequence layer and hit OK. And you can see that After Effects sequenced all of our layers, but what we need to do is we need to extend the edges, extend the out point, so you can drag the edges of the out point or we can move the current time indicator all the way to the end and using the keyboard shortcut alt right bracket for the out point. And let's go ahead and let's check it out. Okay, there's one more thing that we need to do. And let's place each copy beneath each other. So what we can do is Kobe A2, let's put it underneath A and A3 and A4. And let's do the same thing for Kobe B2, B3 and B4. Let's go to C2, C3, and C4. So all the copies, they're all going in order. And let's check this out. And you've created the stop motion. Now this could easily be done in Adobe Premiere. All you need to do is offset each layer. Like I mentioned, we're doing two frames. You can try three frames, four frames. The longer the duration, the slower it will be. Let's go ahead and let's add our background. Let's go to stock footage and I'll be adding this drone footage of downtown LA. But either a video clip or a simple still image works well for this. Let's bring it all the way down to the bottom of our stack and let's rename it to BG. And I'm going to solo this layer and it's a little too slow. So let's speed it up. Right click. Let's go to time, time stretch. And the original duration is 21 seconds and 18 frames. Let's stretch it by 20%. And it's now four seconds and nine frames. Hit OK. And notice that it ends right here, but our composition is five seconds. So simply right click, time, freeze on last frame. And let's go to our Kobe's, select all of them, and let's shift them over so they start at frame 12. Let's go back and let's deselect and let's unsolo this clip and let's check it out. Okay, let's go ahead and let's add this film's stock footage. Let's put it on top of our background. And notice that it's standard definition, so let's scale it up. Right click, go to transform and fit to comp, and let's change the blending mode to add. 
let's play it back and this one I'm going to trim it right around frame 20 but feel free to trim the out point wherever you want and let's go to textures let's go to paper texture and let's add this paper texture on top of our composition and let's change the blending mode to multiply and let's play it back and if I zoom in you can see the paper texture we can add a levels go to color correction go to levels and we can play around with the input black or the input white and it'll show less or more of the texture so feel free to experiment with these sliders and this looks pretty good and let's go ahead and let's add the black bars go to layer new solid let's make it comp size and let's make it black hit OK and let's call it bars go to the view menu go to show rulers and let's make sure that we have show guides turned on and snap to guides let's go to our info panel and take a look at the Y value because we'll be creating two guides and we'll place one at 240 and the second one will be at 840 let's zoom in and let's move this to 840 let's zoom out and let's go to the rectangle tool and let's create two masks and since you have snap to guides turned on it should snap to your guide and let's create one more perfect and let's zoom in on the timeline let's move the current time indicator to frame 12 select the mask hit M for the mask path click on the stopwatch to add a keyframe let's go back to zero add a keyframe and select this keyframe hit control T for the mask transform tool and simply move it up select this keyframe and hit control T for the mask transform tool let's move this down and select the second set of keyframes shift F9 for easy ease and let's check it out okay it's looking good but what we can do is we can slide this over so it'll start at frame 12 and let's put it on top of our stock footage the film stock footage and our background and let's play it back And the last thing that we can do is add a drop shadow. Let's go to our first Kobe, Kobe A. Hit Control D to make a copy. Let's move it underneath and let's call it Kobe A Shadow. Let's solo this layer for now. Let's add a couple effects. Go to Effect, go to Generate, Fill and let's change the color to yellow and let's expand the edges go to effect go to matte simple choker and let's expand the edges all the way to minus 20 it makes it a little rounded but that's okay let's add one last effect go to effect distort displacement map and this requires a layer for the displacement so let's go ahead and let's add that layer We'll be using this image as our displacement so let's bring it into our composition i'll bring it in all the way to the bottom and we can hide this layer let's go back to our kobe a shadow let's go back to our effects and let's select this layer that we just added and if i zoom in you can see a little bit the displacement let's unsolo it and we can change the blending mode to overlay and simply just experiment with the horizontal displacement and the vertical displacement. So just feel free to experiment with these values. And let's go ahead, select all of these effects, go to edit copy or control C or command C if you're on an Apple computer, go to Kobe B and let's repeat the process. Let's make a copy, control D, let's put it underneath and control V to paste these effects change the blending mode to overlay let's go to Kobe C and again let's make a duplicate of this layer and let's paste the effect let's change the blending mode to overlay 
And the very last one is Kobe D. Let's make a duplicate copy, put it underneath, and let's paste the effect. And let's change the blending mode to overlay. Let's select all of the copies, C2, C3, C4, and I'm holding on to control to select these, B2, B3, B4, A2, A3, and A4. What we can do is we can change the blending mode. So let's go to the blending mode and experiment with these blending modes, but luminosity is a great option to start off with. And you can see the difference between normal and if we change it to luminosity, it makes it more black and white monochrome and let's check this out.